The leaders of the United States and Germany are making beelines for Israel. Their visits today and tomorrow aiming to stem an escalation in the Israel-Hamas war while shoring up support for their key Middle Eastern partner. There are also reports that French President Emmanuel Macron will make a visit to Israel in the coming days. President Joe Biden will join U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who's been shuttling between Arab countries in recent days to address the crisis. Blinken says that Mr. Biden's visit will underscore Washington's, quote, ironclad commitment to Israel's security. He's also expected to press Israel on efforts to minimize civilian casualties and to facilitate assistance as humanitarian needs mount across Gaza. The World Health Organization is calling for urgent access to the region to deliver aid and medical supplies. The body says that it will meet with so-called decision makers today to secure access as soon as possible. The World Food Programme is warning that the situation in Gaza is worsening by the minute. It says that food stocks in many shops are down to their last four or five days. Assistance was supposed to arrive at this border crossing, the only one into Gaza not under Israeli control. But Egypt says that the Rafah crossing has been made inoperable due to Israeli airstrikes on the Gaza side, which Hamas claims has killed dozens. Some reports suggest that aid deliveries are now waiting for the Gaza side of the border to open and for assurances of safe passage before crossing. <laughs> احنا امبارح القصف كان بيننا وبينه فيش امطار على معبر رفح واحنا لحتى الان قاعدين في الشوارع بالنام في المقاهي بالنام وللاسف فيش امان في اي مكان ما واولادنا الحمد لله يعني كل يوم بيتصلوا على الخارجي بيقولوا اطلع او ما تطلعش فاحنا بدنا نفهم حالنا نطلع ولا ما نطلعش ولا نضلنا هلا الموت for the latest Sarah Coates joins us she is live for us in Tel Aviv. Sarah, we still have no word on movements in or out of that crossing. What do we know about efforts to bring in humanitarian aid into Gaza? We can see it lining up on the other side of, of the border there. And, and also, what about efforts to free the hostages that Hamas took on October the 7th? Hi, Dawn. Well, look, intensive diplomatic efforts are continuing, ongoing in a bid to open the Rafa crossing in the south of the Gaza Strip. And as you mentioned, there is aid piling up on the Egyptian side, hundreds and hundreds of trucks carrying vital humanitarian aid. While in Gaza, uh, waiting at the Rafa crossing, there are hundreds and hundreds of foreign nationals waiting to get out. At this hour, still no word on if and when this uh, diplomatic or this humanitarian corridor, I should say, will open uh, to let this aid in and these people out. But we are hearing uh, that Egypt, uh, it says Israel, isn't letting it open. We do know that e Egypt does control this crossing, but Israel decides who can go out and what can come in. Now, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the situation in the Gaza Strip is absolutely catastrophic right now. The death toll uh, is around 4,000 people, we understand, uh, with the uh, injury toll rising to around 11,000 people. Now, a group say that uh, electricity or fuel, I should say, will run out any minute now, which means these hospitals that are being absolutely overwhelmed with people are having to prioritise who they treat based on their injuries. So, look, this is one of the reasons that President Biden will be on the ground tomorrow to try and push Israel, which has said, Dawn, it will allow aid into the Strip. It will, he will be pushing Israel to try and find a way to open the Rafah crossing. Now, with regards to hostages, Hamas has come out a little earlier saying that it wants Israel to release around 6,000 prisoners being held here in Israel in exchange for these hostages. Hamas says there are around 250 people being held in Gaza. Israel says it understands there are around 199. Now, as we go to where Turkish President Erdogan, he is talking to Hamas regarding some hostage negotiations. But look, at this hour, there certainly seems to be no movement on that hostage situation. Now, just a couple of hours ago, uh, Dawn Hamas released a video of one of the Israeli hostages, a young woman. Uh, she's uh, seemingly had a bad injury to her arm. She spoke out uh, saying that she is safe and well, that she's been operated on. 
but saying she just desperately wants to come back home to her family. Sarah, in the meantime, amid all of this, we've got Iran dialing up the pressure here on Israel, uh, warning of another shockwave if, if atrocities don't end in Gaza. What are the risk of, of the war expanding here? Well, look, a huge risk, Dawn. This is what so many people are worried about. The global community is really trying to quell these tensions up in the north. Iran's foreign minister came out uh, late last night to say he can't rule out a preemptive strike if, uh, quote, Israel doesn't stop its atrocities in the Gaza Strip. Now, its supreme leader, Alitala Ali Khamenei, also came out a little earlier to say that he cannot stop Muslims around the world if Israel doesn't stop its actions in Gaza. Now, this is certainly very worrying, given what we are seeing on the northern border. The entire northern region, community of Metula, it is now closed off and has become a military zone. Israeli forces are currently striking inside southern Lebanon. This is after more anti-tank missiles were fired over, fired at Israeli troops and Israeli positions in Israel uh, from Hezbollah militants. So, look, this certainly looks like uh, it, tensions are ramping up. And this is a uh, position, a situation that nobody wants to see, given that uh, Hezbollah is backed by Iran and, uh, as I've said before, is thought to have upwards of 150,000 extremely damaging and destructive long-range missiles. So, look, this is another one of the reasons that President Biden will be here on the ground tomorrow, also visiting a number of neighbouring countries uh, to really try and uh, stop this from escalating, Dawn. Sarah, thank you for that update. Sarah Coates, they're live for us in Tel Aviv.